All right, May 19th today, Wednesday. I was cut off yesterday, so I don't remember where I was. So I'll just pick up where I'm at. Award-winning cameraman here. So what I did last night, right when it was getting dark, I added another bed into this section. So I have a variety of peppers and some Swiss chard there. That's kind of what it looked like. So I scraped the hay off and then I till the, I cultivate with a little broken cultivator just to rip the weeds out that are left. And then I just turn that soil a little bit pull everything I don't want out then I bring a load from out of my aisle over there by that wheelbarrow put a few more inches on the top of the mound then I put my little plants in then I put wood chips over it then I water it and I'll do another I'll do this section tonight I'll add more of my seedlings in we're past the danger of frost I think last year we had a really late hard freeze it killed all kinds of stuff it was right about now but the forecast for the next week looks pretty warm so I'm just going to go ahead and plant everything I know I waited kind of long but with the crazy weather I didn't want to lose lose all my tomatoes and peppers again so I figured just getting a late start is better than losing everything so the project yesterday I was working on the uh, electric fence it came out pretty pretty well Came out good, I should say. We've been burying back our ditches a little at a time. So I got my electric in, got my water in across here, got my hydrant in. So there's my ground for now. I just wrapped my ground around it because I didn't have the right size strap. I'm showing you this. I don't know why this is here. Well, for now, we'll just leave it like that. There's our little produce stand. So what I have here is my, here's my charger and there's my positive lug and my ground lug. My ground lug goes right here. This is my ground for my box. So I just hooked it right to that and then it, this is that old wire that runs out wrapped around that eight foot ground rod out there. So we have good ground. The whole point of putting in this box was to run the refrigerator and this charger mostly. But I'm also gonna put some security cameras out here. Oh, and I have a little sign, it says open. So this is interior wire number 10. It was just left over for my conduit pole. And it's hooked together there. What I like doing is using extension cords. If they're made to be outside, I'm not going to get all rotted out. That wire is hooked to my positive lead and then I have a little wire nut. And then my extension cord runs over there and I'm just using like one wire, black wire. Stretched kind of tight. Anyway, I use some really high-end uh, electrical tape there. It's actually just a piece of duct tape. So I got the black lead on the extension cord, stripped it back and now it's wrapped around that uh, electric fence wire. This whole thing is very much energized. So I used just some uh, mason twine to attend, uh, attach to that existing T-post. So that way nothing's shorting out and it kind of keeps animals out. And it puts a lot of tension on that fence. So this wire is energized and it's just wrapped around that top wire on that fence. So we spaced it 10 feet, put a little notch in the top little notch on the T that's a little bit off the ground so it's not going to short out. And this fence is in pretty bad shape. We had to patch quite a few broken strings but we had the cows out yesterday and they got zapped a couple times and they haven't even attempted to test it. So I'm going to let them back out here in a few minutes. But the fence, let me show you this corner up here. And these corners it tended to want to pull it in so I just wrapped the piece of string around the top of the post to kind of keep them in place. But it's, it's remained tight. See all my potatoes coming in, green beans in there. No, nobody's eating on them. Chickens will probably figure out how to get under there, but it's okay. They eat my green beans, they eat my green beans. Maybe they'll help eat pests off of my potatoes. Never has really seemed to work, but maybe it will. So this corner didn't have any support, but it seems like it's doing okay. And then again with the nylon string. Here is the water line running 
from the hydrant over by that produce stand, 200 feet. <clears throat> That's the end of my second piece of 100 foot three quarter. We'll be working on all this today. I'm gonna get my Harbor Freight transfer. What's left of the poor thing? I'm gonna work on attaching that out there. We got the hydrant in up by that wheelbarrow. Here's the end of the 100 foot right there. So probably gonna end up putting a hydrant right over there by the electrical uh, guy wire there, just because can't nobody's gonna be driving through there anyway. So that's a really safe place to put another hydrant. So we'll be doing a lot of digging and pipeline today, and I'll keep you updated on that. I'm gonna walk over to the greenhouse and show you my squash. Here's some leftover supplies from my uh, fence. This is just a steel bar, three eighths, and then cut it with a jigsaw. And then I don't see any tea. We used all the teas. Anyway, I just notched the teas. I used a fence counter to put the metal bars in, and these are the little pieces that go on the ground right underneath the tea. There's another hydrant we'll be putting in. It's got the one inch um, T on it. So here's the mess of a greenhouse. I burned up this Harbor Freight fan, so I went and got another one. Because the uh, corn is definitely dropping pollen, as you can see. Pollen all over the plants. So been a month and a half since I planted this stuff. You can see the corn coming on. Corn silks. I'll turn this uh, fan on here so it will uh, maybe blow some of that pollen around. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Squash. I'll be harvesting that today. I was worried about bees getting in here or pollinators of some sort. But they are definitely getting in here. So I'm going to harvest that today and eat that. It's not very big, but it's a called Dixie Hybrid. So I'll just go ahead and pop it off of there. And you can see more squash happening and so forth. So it's going to be getting exciting hopefully in the next few weeks. Let's see if that corn's ready in two weeks or not. I had to string it up. I just didn't have enough uh, air movement in here to make this corn strong at all. Corn was weak, so we put strings up to help hold it in place. Now I do have watermelon out along the front of that, so probably gonna try to do watermelon and tomatoes in here after I harvest all this other stuff out. We'll see how long before the squash borers come. I'm kind of in a quandary. I wanna keep the bad bugs out off the squash. I got that quarter inch mess down there, or half inch but I have to let the pollinators in so maybe I'll screen just that lower part and hopefully that'll keep the bad bugs out I have no idea I was gonna make a mason bee tunnel keep the mason bee house to keep to get the pollinators in here but I guess I don't really need to so anyway I'll update some more later I'm gonna cut this piece of squash off and go start digging I'm gonna let the cows out then go start digging anyway there's my my little, little baby squash but there's a lot of little ones on there, so I'll just keep picking them, keep making it produce. We'll see how long before the bugs become a problem. Come on, cows. Back up so the little ones won't be scared. Big ones aren't scared of me, but the little ones are a little hesitant. Come on, girls. One, move it. Two, what are you waiting on? Go on. Sitting here wondering what to do. There you go. Well, anyway, this is the cows. One thing I always say is lawn mowing is a sin. It's, it's just so much better use for grass than simply mowing it down. So here's the front of my stand here. So I could weed eat this, I could try to choke it out with tarps, mow it, spray it. But what I'm gonna do now is just put up three kettle pedals, attach it from this end over to that end, 
got it chained and I got the pins. Got the, there's the chain. And then over there I just put the pin to the cattle panel that I already have. And then I just chained it so it would be easier. And this will hold them in. All the pins are tight. They can't really push this. I have another chain off the gate. I just opened them and put it on that. But here's the front of our produce stand. It's not very inviting. So we're going to get these cows to clean it up. I'm going to go ahead and open this other gate. I'm also going to inside the... I'm going to section off that part of the garden down there. I'm going to let them come in here and clean this up before I till this up. And put some summer crops in. It's definitely time to get in some corn and sunflower and all that kind of everything. It's time to put everything in. So I'm running late, but I'm going to just take advantage of this little patch after they mow it for me. I'll try to get something going. So there's the lawn mowing crew. Hard at work. I'm sure they'll clear out that uh, honeysuckle as well on the fence. Which is fine by me. So it won't take them long to clean this up. I'll only leave them in here for one day. Then I'll take all my panels down there. Goes to the honeysuckle right there. Jersey girl. So I'll just leave them in here for one day. They'll clean it up pretty well. <laughs> Man, they're stirring up some pollen. Anyway, this is how you should mow your lawn, folks. If you're living in the city and can't do it this way, move in the country. Running that gasoline engine just to mow your little lawn just for vanity. You could be raising beef geese or goats or sheep horses or something and opening the gate and letting the llama and crew work for free basically just just a better way of doing things better use of the land and when they're done they're going to leave you a high quality fertilizer to boot they're going to turn a couple hundred pounds of grass into a couple hundred pounds of fertilizer you know take what they need out of it make you meat or milk or more babies or whatever Anyway, think about it.